Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're making a NeoPixel Halloween costume. I've made dozens of wearable LED projects, and I'm here to share my best tips for design and construction when you want to put pixels in a costume. First up, make sure you're up to speed with the basics required to make a prototype NeoPixel circuit. If you need a refresher, check out the playlist for this series. We've got episodes about LEDs, soldering, Arduino and its code libraries, troubleshooting, and more. Even if you have a pretty good idea of what you want to make, it's always a smart idea to make a sketch or a diagram to help visualize your idea before you get started. It can help you make the bill of materials you'll need, also called a bomb. I'm making a flying saucer costume. I want a few LEDs around the perimeter and also some underlighting. I'm using recycled cardboard for the main body. It's free and easy to find. And uh, using optional accents with a paper or 3D printing. I found some different addressable LEDs on DigiKey that might be a good fit for this project. I also picked up a small microcontroller and some stranded wire. It's smart to use a solder type breadboard for something that's going to move around. So your basic Arduino Uno form factor with the plug-in headers isn't gonna cut it. These days there are a bunch of very capable, tiny and affordable boards that would fit into any costume or accessory. I've had a really good time lately with boards like the Seed Studio Zhao RP2040 or any RP2040 board for that matter, as well as the M0 like on the Gemma or Trinket. We'll also need a battery for this project. If you've got a lot of LEDs, you can just use a USB battery pack like you would use to recharge your phone. If you only have a few LEDs, however, your circuit might not draw enough power to exceed the auto shutoff feature that most of those nicer USB battery packs have. If that's the case, more advanced makers might choose a rechargeable LiPoly battery that matches the capacity required by the circuit. They're available in an enormous variety of shapes and sizes and do require special precautions to use and store safely. So I recommend for beginners you use an alkaline battery pack instead. When you consider your own project idea, keep in mind that smaller isn't always easier and bigger isn't always more difficult. My costume is easier to build because I can reach inside and all around the various elements, but it's not so big as to be impractical either. Every year I assign my students to make an LED Halloween costume and we march them in the New York City Halloween Parade. They quickly learn their project's weaknesses. For example, the wires pull apart because they didn't have enough slack, the battery dies faster than they expected, or the costume is just too unwieldy to keep up with the rest of the group. So my tips are based on years of practical experience building this type of thing myself and also helping my students build and fix their first costume with pixel LEDs inside. It's important that your circuit has quality solder joints. If you have a fraying strand or two on your pixels, the circuit may short out and become damaged or dysfunctional and potentially even dangerous if you short out the battery. Refer to our previous episode on the topic of advice for making solid solder connections. But basically, you want to be tidy and heat everything evenly. Optionally, consider some additional LED diffusion, but don't overthink it. If paper's what you've got, use that. Of course, you can also 3D print specialized diffusers to match the theme of your costume. But don't let fancy tech get in the way of making your first prototype. Something that's not optional is strain relief. You absolutely need to prevent your wires from pulling so your connections don't rip apart and disable the functions of your costume. Hot glue can be very helpful to anchor components and wires in place. I made the whole costume with hot glue. And here's my best tip for hot glue. Keep a bowl of ice water nearby in case of burns. Of course, you should be careful to try to avoid coming into contact with the hot glue, but if you do burn yourself, when you do burn yourself, you want to cool down the affected area right away. You'd be surprised how much less damage happens to your skin when you keep the ice water bath so nearby. Speaking of water, keep in mind whether your project needs to be resistant to water or not. If the circuit is close to your humid body or likely to get a drink spilled on it, in addition to the obvious rainy weather, water resistance has to be a priority. You can use various glues and adhesives to seal up the exposed electrical contacts and insulate them from moisture. You can also combine glue and heat shrink tubing 
for some extra physical strength while waterproofing. Keep in mind that the material of your costume, including vinyl and weather-resistant LED strands, can also do most of the weatherproofing for you. Once you've got your costume to a wearable state, practice wearing it around. Make sure you can see and move and make any adjustments needed to improve the comfort and practicality of your build. We've covered a lot of the physical aspects of building a circuit into your costume, but don't forget that the code is just as important. If you want to show off a few different LED colors or patterns, a good sketch to start with is the NeoPixel example called Button Cycler. It counts the button presses and uses a case switch, which is basically a shorthand for a long chain of if-then-else if statements to play a different animation for each one. I've put links to some resources in the description. What are you building for Halloween? Let us know in the comments. Check out the playlist with the rest of this series and subscribe to be sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.